Hi, greetings to fellow Whovians. Whovian Queen here. Hope you have a good week so far. Well, a look at the 11th Doctor era now continues on with The Rings of Agaten. The 11th Doctor, having seen Clara die twice before, decides to learn more about his new companion and travels into her past to observe her. He finds that her parents met by a chance encounter caused by a gust of wind blowing a leaf into her father's face and discovers that her mother died while Clara was a teenager. The doctor goes back to the present and collects Clara, then takes her to the Rings of Agaten, where they observe a series of planetoids in a ring system orbiting a planet, with a shining pyramid on one planetoid. The doctor takes Clara to a giant alien marketplace where the currency is items of sentimental value. Clara then encounters a girl called Mary Gagel, sorry I butchered the pronunciation of that, the Queen of Years. Mary tells Clara that she is hiding because she is supposed to sing a song at a ceremony and she is afraid to get it wrong. Clara reassures her by telling her what her mother once said, and Mary heads to the ceremony. The doctor and Clara attend the ceremony, where the doctor explains that since the rings were settled, there has been a constant song sung to keep the old god of Akaten asleep. Mary begins singing, joined by Cloist by Chorister at the at the pyramid. During the song, a beam of light from the pyramid envelops Mary, and she is pulled toward the pyramid to have her soul sacrificed to Akaten. The Doctor and Clara rent a space bike, which they ride to the pyramid. The Doctor promises Mary that she does not have to sacrifice herself and that he will stop Akaten. The Doctor lets Clara and Mary escape from the pyramid, but Akaten, a planetized parasitic creature, awakens. Clara and Mary flee back to the ceremony and the Doctor faces the creature, realizing it feeds off memories, stories, and feelings. He tries to overfeed it by, by offering it the sum total of his Time Lord memories. Mary also leads the citizens in a song of hope, confusing Akaten, who then disappears. However, the doctor's memories are not enough to save the creature, and Akaten reappears. Clara returns to help, offering Akaten the leaf that blew into her father's face on the day he met her mother, which contains an infinite amount of untold potential that Clara's mother never saw because she died early. Akaten implodes on itself, and the rings are saved. Yay! So let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. In the Bells of St. John, the Doctor finds a preserved leaf pressed between the pages of Clara's book, 101 Places to See. Clara enigmatically refers to it as page 1. The opening scene in the Rings of, in the Rings of Akaten explains this statement, showing how a mishap involving the leaf led to her parents' first meeting. The Doctor mentions to Clara they had visited Akaten long ago with his granddaughter. This is a reference to Susan Foreman, the Doctor's granddaughter and companion who traveled with the First Doctor. And now let's take a look at some outside references. In Sui's Pimari Gajel, the Doctor cites Lewis Carroll's poem The Walrus and the, Combater, well, the, Walrus and the, Cop and the Carpenter when he mentions shoes and ships and sealing wax, cabbages and kings. <laughs> now finally, let's take, a look, let's take a look at the production of this episode. Writer Neil Cross was a Doctor Who fan, but never had the time to write an episode. Executive producer Caroline Skinner, who was new with the Seven Series, knew him and offered to work his schedule around writing an episode. He was willing to do it. Executive producer and lead writer Stephen Moffat was pleased to have Cross join, as he was a showrunner in his own right with Luther. Cross had written the ninth episode of the series, Hyde, which was liked by the producers, and so Cross was asked to write The Rings of Akaten when he was in the UK after Hyde had completed filming. Actor Jenna Louise Coleman named The Rings of Agaten one of her favorites of the second half of the seventh series, as it was the first adventure for Clara, which allowed the audience to watch the story begin again. The concept behind having the episode based around an alien planet occurred to Moffat, Skinner, and producer Marcus Wilson when realizing that they had done big location pieces in the first half of the series with A Town Called Mercy and The Angels Take Manhattan, but, none for the sec but had none for the second half. They decided to do a story in, quote, a world created in art studios to make you feel you're really out there, rather than having the doctor, quote, promise an earthly wonders to his companions and get them trapped in an underground tunnel. <coughs> Excuse me. As such, the episode was designed to allow the doctor to actually show his new companion the wonders he had promised. The production team aimed to show the best alien planet on Doctor Who. The episode originally had a different pre credit sequence, she consisted of a long scene in the kitchen in which Clara informs the doctor she cannot come and travel with the doctor because she has responsibilities to her job. The boy she she takes care of 
Kirov asks if the doctor is her boyfriend. Cross's intent was to juxtapose this mundane scene with the vast scale of the planet. However, Moffat thought at the time in this series the doctor should be investigating Clara through her parents, and Cross refused to include the leave, an idea Moffat approved of. Originally, the resolution was to was to be the doctor defeating the planet with a speech, which Cross likened to quote, facing down one of Lovecraft's old gods, an alien so alien that it's practically a supernatural being. Moffat pointed out that the doctor had given similar speeches, it was more interested in Clara saving the day. After thinking about it for a while, Cross realized he would incorporate the leap into the solution. The read through for the Rings of Agaten was held on October 17, 2012, with filming again the next week on October 22nd. Director Farron Blackburn, Blackburn had previously worked on the program in the 2011 Christmas special The Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe. <clears throat> According to actor Matt Smith, there were between 50 and 60 prosthetic aliens in a scene set in an alien market. The Doctor features minimally in the first act because Smith was busy filming pickups or reshoots for Nightmare and Silver. Millennium FX's Neil Gordon remarked that he had, quote, always wanted to do a scene like the Star Wars Cantina and worked on different molds in his spare time in case it would be, they could be used for the future, as making 30 different aliens at one time would, one time would be out of the budget. Much of the episode was constructed around talks of what would be created with limited resources. For example, Cross recalled that producer Marcus Wilson called him in and asked, quote, We've always wanted to have a speeder bike like in Return of the Jedi, and we know how to do it inexpensively, so can you get one into the story? However, Cross felt that the speeder bike ended up having more, more common with Flash Gordon. The songs were written by composer Murray Gold. To establish here at the beginning of the episode, Ghost Town by the Specialist is heard and the Doctor seat reading a 1981 copy of the Beano. The issue of the Beano was reprinted and included in Doctor Who themed edition on May 15th, 2013. Huh, that's interesting. So overall, I think this is a pretty unique episode and I like the fact that the Doctor and Clara actually got to go on an adventure for the very, for, for the very first time off-world, so yeah. So overall, I give The Rings of Akaten Four Sonic Screwdrivers out of five. Well, I hope you enjoyed the review, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share it around, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified about my blog videos, and to help support this channel, then be sure to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in the description below. And I'll see you guys next time for the next episode, Cold War. So, until then, this is Hoofy and Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I've a recipe of the new truffle. Would you like a chili, baby? Fantastic! Alon Z! Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fezzes are cool, and Stetsons are cool. <laughs>